Welcome back everyone to the Hello World Guy and this is the start of our new series in which we are going to make a game in C++ using Android Studio for uh, Android basically. So on this channel we have not really, uh, we have done a lot of game development in C++ for like desktop using libraries like SFML and of course we have also done an OpenGL series. But this time we are going to learn how to do it with Android Studio and uh, uh, make a mobile game instead. So for this we are not going to be using any game engine of Unreal or Unity instead we are going to do it in using the Android game development kit and we are not going to use something like libgdx with Kotlin or Java we are going to do it in C++ with uh, like our own native code so uh, this does this series does depend that you know a little bit of OpenGL if you do not then I've got a series explaining the basics of OpenGL that you can check out and uh, learn from there and afterwards you can do this uh, with Android so in order to get started the first thing you need to do is you need to install uh, or download uh, Android Studio. The latest version here as of making this video is Android Studio Giraffe and uh, uh, you can see it's got a bunch of cool features you can read about it here and if I go down here uh, under downloads you can download it for Windows 64 bit you can also download like a zip version but uh, recommended is to download like exe for installer and uh, uh, you can also download it for Mac whether it's ARM or like uh, normal x86 computers and you can also download it for Linux and uh, we have also got a version from Chrome OS uh, if you actually want to use that uh, well uh, you can download it from here pretty easily and once you have installed Android Studio we can get started making our game so once you have gone through the process of uh, installing Android Studio, we are going to get started with our application. So if I open up Android Studio, like on the first time, you should see something like this. There might not be any projects here or there might be depending on whether you have used Android Studio before or not. Uh, and uh, we are going to get started and use uh, Android Studio to make our own game. So for that, uh, I'm going to go under here and you can see we've got new project. You can also get a project from a version control system like uh, GitHub. And remember that this is a pretty basic, uh, you know, uh, series. We are not going to uh, require that you know a lot of Android. You don't need to have done any Java or Kotlin programming uh, in Android either. We are going to be using C++. So you should know C++ and you should know the basics of OpenGL as well. We are not going to be using too advanced OpenGL, but you should know the very basics. If you don't, you can check out my series and you don't really need to have any background with Android uh, itself because we are going to be covering that completely so assuming that you have opened up Android Studio for the first time uh, you can go ahead and create a new project here and once I do that you can see it gives a bunch of templates uh, so in Android everything is organized into activity so there are basically uh, a bunch of like different activities uh, for each screen in the game we have got a different activity and here we can kind of decide what kind of activity we need to do uh, what kind of activity we need to start with of course a uh, you know a complex application will have many activities or a simple one might have a single activity this allows us to start with a basic kind of activity uh, and we can decide which, which one we want uh, by the way you can see we can also make it for Wear OS or television and automotive we are, we are of course going to make it for phone and tab, uh, tablet now in the templates you can choose no activity as well if you want to do everything from scratch but let's just uh, go here and you can see it has got a bunch of different activities like this empty or basic view activities or empty view activity or navigation and navigation drawer and responsive views a bunch of stuff but none of this is what we want this is like uh, to do Kotlin programming or Java if you want to do that and uh, um, it allows you to create UI and stuff of that sort but we want a game so we don't want an app for which you can choose one of these two options you could either choose like perfect native C++ or do that but we are going to use game activity now this game activity is like the new Android game development kit and it can be used to make a lot of uh, it can basically it's like a bit low level but it has got a lot of different stuff that we can use and this is like the modern way to develop high performance games in Android so this will allow us to you in C++ so we'll choose game activity C++ and hit next this will by the way create only one activity which is going to be of type game activity and we won't really need to do any Kotlin programming since it would the template will generate all the code we need and everything else we'll be doing in C++ code uh, so we're going to go next here and you can see it allows us to put name here let us I'm going to call it uh, uh, my game here and 
the package name you can set it to whatever you like uh, uh, you can like for example do anything I'm just going to say the hello world guy here and uh, uh, you can see that you can store it in any location we are going to just do it here F language here you can choose either Java or Kotlin Kotlin is like the modern one so you should almost certainly use Kotlin uh, but you can use Java if you want to it does not really matter that much because we won't be really doing any Kotlin programming at all so for the minimum SDK uh, you can select whatever you like uh, I'm going to select Android 30 right now which means it will run on like 59% of devices uh, you can generally set it to a lot lower and uh, uh, we you might want to actually set it to a lot lower but let's just leave it at API 30 right now however this is a pretty high API and we do want to support more than 60% of the devices because 40% uh, is a pretty big number that we are not supporting so for that we'll have to set it to a lower API which we'll do later and uh, another problem might be that uh, some of the stuff included might need, uh, need to be changed for Android game development kit but uh, we'll get to that in a second so let's just select it leave it everything at default here and hit next and this is by the way the build configuration language this is like the old one Kotlin DSL uh, we have also got this uh, one which is experimental or you've got groovy DSL which is all we are going to keep it at Kotlin DSL and hit next so now we have got a C++ standard we are going to choose C++ 17 since that's the latest one and you should probably be using C++ 17 and uh, we are going to uh, choose that and once we hit finish it should start creating the uh, project for us so depending on your internet connection and computer it might take a little bit of while for it to sync everything and download all resources and get everything set up but once it has done that uh, you should automatically there should be a main activity.kt file opened up and your file explorer should start out to work as well so if I open up my project here and uh, before we go into any of this uh, I'm going to give you a brief overview of Android Studio now Android uh, Studio is based on like IntelliJ IDEA and that kind of products for this reason it's extremely complex and generally a lot overwhelming for a beginner to understand but you actually don't need to really understand all of it we, you can just use the features you want and uh, we'll go through it one by one so uh, first thing you need to know is that my UI might look a bit different because I'm using the new UI so you should probably go under file settings and uh, even though you could you still use the old UI it just uh, the new UI looks better so you should go under new UI beta and uh, uh, generally enable this enable new UI so we are going to do that and uh, afterwards you can see we have got this here and uh, this is like our project this one here and we can press it to kind of see what files you have and what files you don't and there are a bunch of different options all over the place but we'll we'll only go into those which we need to so if I open a project I'm going to close this you can see I have got a basically two different kinds of folders here now these folders or whatever they are in Android Studio may not exactly represent how your structure is organized on file but uh, they are kind of uh, made it so that you can access your important files easily so we have got basically two things here one is app and the other is Gradle scripts now Gradle is the build system for Android and here it includes all of the scripts that we uh, that control how our file is built and everything and we are not going to modify any of these and we are going to just shut it down now in the app contains our app source code uh, we have got manifests here uh, like android manifest.xml which controls like android stuff uh, you can use it to do a lot of things but we are not going to modify it as well uh, in java here uh, you can see that we have got we have got these test folders we are not going to go into these we don't really are doing any unit testing right now but in the main folder if I open it up uh, in like whatever package name you put here you should be able to see a main activity dot kotlin file here if you use java it might be a java file but since we use kotlin this is a kotlin file now in here uh, you if you don't know any Kotlin you might not be able to understand all of this but uh, it's not really anything to worry about we'll just quickly go over this uh, we don't won't be doing any Kotlin programming so you don't need to actually learn Kotlin so it's pretty similar to Java you can see we are declaring the package and importing everything here is our main activity class which as I said before is inheriting from game activity since we are using the game activity library and uh, in here we th this part of the code is basically responsible for making sure that any of the system UI elements like the top bar or left right anything if not displayed since for our game we don't want any of that since we are going to be doing all of our rendering on our own uh, in the game C++ code now in here you can see this here 
this is the initialization and in the initialization it does a single thing which is that it loads a library it calls system dot load library and this library name is my game now this library is the c++ library that we have got and uh, its name should match the name of the library you are generating in your cmake we'll get into that as well in a second but this basically loads the c++ library and then the code is uh, basically the control is transferred over to c++ and uh, uh, we don't really need to do anything else in Kotlin right now. We can just close it. So that's pretty cool. Now let's uh, go under CPP here. Uh, you can see we have got CPP. This includes all of our C++. By the way, we have also got assets here and this uh, like resources stuff. We are not going to modify these or this right now. Uh, so let's open up CPP here. Uh, you can see that here it contains a bunch of files. Now these are not actually a part of the Android game development kit instead they are like a basic template or a starting point for uh, you know uh, a basic basic kind of game in C++ so it basically set up a bit of a small renderer and uh, uh, render stuff using OpenGL and uh, we are going to actually not be using this mainly uh, we are going to be doing our own stuff so yeah we'll uh, not actually be using all of these files instead we'll modify or delete or remove or replace most or if not all of them now we'll get started with the C++ code in the next video for now let's just uh, go here and uh, get some other things set up firstly you will need to of course test your application now for that if you have got an Android phone that supports Android 11 plus then that is the best way to do it uh, you can go under here under device manager choose physical and choose pair using Wi-Fi and uh, if you've got an Android plus device you can use it uh, to do that uh, and if you have got an, if you have not got an Android Plus device or you want to test on some other device, you can go here under Virtual and create a virtual device. Now you can see I have already got a virtual device here, which is uh, of API 30 and it's like a Pixel 7 and it has Android 11 installed. So uh, if you uh, you will probably not have any devices here. So in order to create a device, just hit on this Create Device button. Now, first of all, you need to select the hardware. Uh, you would either want to do phone or tablet for this. You can also do Wear OS and other stuff. But uh, uh, I'm going to do phone here. And in here, you can see there are a bunch of these. And I re would recommend using one with Play Store. Uh, it's not really that necessary, but uh, doing it might help so you can see we have got a bunch of stuff here for example you can choose pixel 7 pro here or you can choose uh, uh, one of these very small phones or you could choose like a nexus 6 you can choose any phone you like so let's open up pixel 7 here and uh, uh, Pixel 7 Pro and you can hit next and here you'll need to choose a system image which is the actual software th that you have I have already downloaded the R system image which is like API level 30 if you want to download some other image or you have got no image downloaded you can just hit on this download button and it should automatically start downloading I'm going to cancel though and once you have done that you can just select whatever release you want uh, and you should probably choose one from the recommended ones uh, don't really go into those just choose one from the recommended and once you have done that hit next and uh, choose a name for the actual device uh, so that you can recognize it and uh, uh, also you can stuff set stuff like startup orientation make sure it's portrait because we are going to be making a portrait game uh, for this one and you can disable the device frame if you want uh, then it would be just like a window and not any device frame and there are a bunch of advanced settings but you don't need to concern yourself with those we can just finish and it will create it so i have already got one i won't be creating it i'll just cancel so uh, we have got this here and this is the virtual device that we are going to be testing our apps on awesome so now that's uh, pretty cool and uh, here you can see we got also notifications and uh, some other stuff uh, this will show all devices that you are running whether it's uh, virtual or uh, physical you can enable mirroring to kind of see here and uh, if you've got like a physical device and uh, uh, in here on the bottom left corner here is like most of the uh, you know other stuff that we are going to be using regularly first of all is uh, uh, this build one which is going to basically give us the output of our build if it succeeds it will say build successful if it fails it will give the appropriate error messaging in this window uh, this is logcat now logcat is a tool that you can use for logging stuff from android to uh, your like computer you can use it with physical devices as well i think and you can also use it with virtual devices and this is what we will be using for actually monitoring our game like printing out debugging uh, information 
so this is going to come in handy as well and uh, this is like the actual terminal which you can use as well uh, you can like execute commands in here and uh, you know it's just like a standard terminal integrity terminal and uh, now the most important thing you need to ensure is that you've got the appropriate SDK and NDK install for which you need to go under here and go under tools and SDK manager and in here we need to and you can see if you've got like Android API 34 uh, Android Studio should have installed the latest version automatic uh, version of uh, the API uh, the SDK automatically now I've also got Android 4.4 or API level 19 installed here because I want to ensure that we support uh, we are going to set our minimum API level to 19 because we want our app to run on most of the you know f uh, devices for which we'll need to set our Android version to as low as we can without uh, sacrificing important features so we'll set it to uh, I have got uh, you know Android 9 API level 19 20 and 21 installed you can install as many as you like uh, but uh, you should probably only install those that you really need anyways if I go under SDK tools you need to make sure that you install NDK because this will allow us to make games in C++ uh, if you don't install this C++ might not work you can see I've got an update available uh, if you have got any of these not installed you should probably just tick this and hit down the download button and it would download it automatically once you apply I'm going to cancel because uh, I'm not going to update it right now uh, and to ensure you have got the NDK installed you can go under your folder here whatever a folder it was saying so if I go under tools uh, SDK manager you can see it's saying uh, that it's uh, uh, the location is this so c slash whatever your uh, user path is after uh, that we are going android slash sdk so you can open this path and check if the ndk folder is present and uh, if everything is good then you should probably not need to download anything else and uh, we should be able to get started with the actual game so that is what we'll do in the next video in the next video we'll actually get started with the c++ programming so that's going to be pretty awesome so stay tuned for that i'll see you in the next one and make sure to like and subscribe as well and and bye.